got hurt enough. I don't want to get hurt no more. Yes! Trends are everywhere. They are ubiquitous in all sorts of media, including the ever-changing gaming industry. Following almost every genre-defining game is a wide range of titles from all sorts of developers, striving to entice and hook players everywhere. Some push the genre forward, evolving the formula and putting a new spin on something familiar, while others make fruitless attempts to capture the same audience. You may remember some of the biggest gaming trends, going back in time to the days of the Doom clones or the booming RTS genre of the early 2000s, or maybe you were like me and loved the arcade shooters of the early 2010s. The list goes on and on, with the most recent trend that we've seen that has taken the world by storm in the last several years. Most of the time, we'll see gaming trends appear after the launch of an extremely successful product. Millions of people will be playing a new game that offers some totally new experience, so developers all over the world will try to adapt this new formula for their different IPs and add their own little spin to try and make their title a little bit more enticing. Just like any market full of new products, it becomes quickly saturated with clones and poor releases from companies all chasing the trend in hopes that they're able to make some money or build up a player base. The most notable case of this was with the battle royale genre. It's also important to note that while developers certainly push trends, publishers also play a huge part of this. Games cost a lot of money to make, even when we're not talking the biggest AAA titles. So more often than not, you'll actually see publishers try and push genres that are currently popular or that they think are going to be popular as they see it as the safer option than something totally new or something less in vogue. As time goes on though, trends die out, and with that comes an interesting time as developers scramble to hit it big and innovate the next huge trend. And that takes us to today, where it seems more and more likely that the next big gaming trend is going to be the extraction shooter. Or at least, that seems like what the industry wants the next big trend to be. If you aren't aware what an extraction shooter is, well, don't worry, I got gotcha. you. It's actually pretty similar to the Battle Royale, with the main difference being that the win condition isn't just being the last alive. Instead, players can extract from the map with various loot that they can either trade or equip to their character, making the goal of an extraction shooter more of a progression of your character rather than just purely to try and be the last one standing in a singular lobby. Most existing extraction shooters have combined PvP and PvE in a attempts to create a fun experience of scavenging, objectives, and occasional high-intensity battles with other players. Generally, extraction shooters also have heavy penalties on death, either losing all of your items on your character, or most of them outside of insurance-style systems that let you retain certain prized possessions. What this leads to is sort of a combination of the survival style games that we used to see all over the place and the popular battle royales that have dominated gaming as of late. The question is though, are extraction shooters actually going to take over the gaming space? And that is a very interesting question because extraction shooters are experiencing something that I have never seen before in gaming. Gamers are already apathetic of newly announced extraction shooters, and that's despite the fact that we haven't really gotten very many of them, especially from AAA developers. This though hasn't stopped both the AAA and indie companies as the list of announced extraction shooters or rumored extraction shooters keeps on growing, which to some makes the trend almost seem like it's being forced rather than more organic like we had seen in prior trends. As of today, the big doggy dog in the extraction shooter world is Escape from Tarkov, which was developed by Battlestate Games and actually went into alpha back in 2016, so it's been around for quite a bit. It's a very hardcore and gritty take on the genre, with not only an extremely rough learning curve, but also, these days, a horrible hacking problem. 
This hasn't stopped Tarkov though from seeing success, and despite not being from a well-known developer beforehand or having tons of marketing push, the game has carved out a very dedicated niche, one that according to the website activeplayers.io sees over 200,000 players a day in 2023 even though the game arguably peaked back in 2021. I should also note, I don't actually know how accurate this website is, but Tarkov is still big, that's the point. Escape from Tarkov, despite plugging along since 2016, is still going very strong, and it's considered both the most successful extraction shooter and also probably the first to fully utilize the genre. In that same year of 2016, we also saw The Division try their hand at an extraction style mode, with the survival mode that was a 24 player PvP VE experience where players would try and extract materials from the Dark Zone. While it wasn't as in-depth and as deep as Escape from Tarkov, The Division Survival was a fun game mode, and it was actually liked by a lot of players and something that many of those players were bummed did not return in The Division 2. This mode, while one of the earlier extraction shooters, kind of towed the line somewhat between a BR and an extraction shooter, though looking back I'd say it's clearly safe to call it an extraction shooter, but at the time, this felt like The Division's take on a battle royale. It is also important to note that at this time, nobody was even calling these extraction shooters. And even today, Escape from Tarkov on Wikipedia is just called a tactical FPS. A few years later in 2018, we would see another stab at the extraction shooter genre titled Hunt Showdown, which was developed by Crytek, the creators of Crisis. Hunt, similar to The Division Survival, was probably more of a swing at a unique battle royale style game than a full-fledged extraction shooter, as in my opinion, it does lack a little bit of the progression depth of something like Tarkov, but I'd also say that it's very much still an extraction shooter. Hunt has slightly more of a horror spin to it, but just like the prior two games, features PvPvE gameplay focused around completing objectives, killing players, and extracting if you wish. In Hunt, the sound design is actually a key focus of the game, making players really choose when they want to take battles, as people can hear you shooting almost anywhere on the map and can come running to hunt you down. Get it? Hunt you down? Oh brother, this guy stinks! You're welcome. That's my boomer pun for the video. The main premise is to kill one of the bosses on the map, which you find by doing a chain of different objectives to track down their location, though you could also just go around killing players or ruining their day at a boss if you wish. Similar to Escape from Tarkov, Hunt has an extremely steep learning curve, and it is something you have to go in willing to learn before you're going to be able to perform well. A funny fact is that 40% of Hunt Showdown players have actually never killed another player, period. Almost half of the people who have launched this game have have never actually killed a player. That is an insane statistic. Hunt isn't as popular as Escape from Tarkov these days, but over time it's actually slowly grown on Steam and since its release in 2018 has shown a pretty notable upward trend in players. These days hitting around 20k players a day, though the peak was 11 months ago when it hit almost 40k concurrent players. Another interesting Hunt fact is it's actually one of the newest games still using the Cry Engine, which was once considered so powerful, the meme of can it run crisis was almost a barometer of PC performance. In August of 2019, Jaeger Development launched a title to early access called The Cycle Frontier, which was an extraction shooter with more of an interstellar theme. Eventually, this would full release on PC in June of 2022 and hit a peak player count on Steam of 40,000 concurrent players, but these days hovers around two to 3,000. And we got some news hot off the presses after writing and recording and starting to edit this video. Turns out the Cycle Frontier is actually shutting down. It'll be completely shut down September 27th. So RIP the Cycle Frontier, you will be missed by some people, definitely not me, because I never really cared about this game. Jokes aside though, it does suck to see games shut down. Obviously these developers put a lot of hard work into the cycle and now it is going to be completely gone, just like many, many games before it, and something we've seen in droves in previous trends like the MOBA trend and the Battle Royale trend. This isn't the first game ever to shut down, it's not gonna be the last, and we're gonna see a lot more extraction shooters probably go the same way. Marauders was another quote-unquote indie extraction shooter to come out. This one was released by Small Impact 
Impact Games in October of 2022 after its alpha and beta period, and it's currently only available on PC. Now, Marauders has a very unique atmosphere where it's set in a diesel punk world after industrialization and militarization of space has occurred in mass. The game, like many before, features PvPVE and has a very similar gameplay loop of progressing your character, though this one does include some basic space fight, which kind of gives it its own flair a little bit. Marauders was never huge, but it did hit around 14,000 players around release, however these days struggles to even hit 1,000 concurrent players. This is one that I actually did hop on and try with some of my buddies, and I will say it's honestly pretty fun, though it is brutal to play if you don't have a squad to hop in with. DMZ is probably the last extraction shooter up to this point worth mentioning, other than the Battlefield mode which is totally dead as of today. Now DMZ shipped with Warzone 2 in November of 2022 and was Call of Duty's first attempt at an extraction shooter, kind of similar to how Blackout was their first attempt at a battle royale. And this along with Battlefield 2042's hazard mode are the first time that we saw AAA studios really take a stab at the genre since The Division, albeit these are obviously game modes and not full games. Now DMZ itself is actually pretty fun. Like all the others it contains PvPVE gameplay revolved around doing missions or just hunting players. However, unlike something like Tarkov it does lack a lot of depth, which is really the main criticism toward the mode. Overall though, it feels like DMZ has been a bit of a slow burner. While at launch, Warzone was definitely the focus of most players, with many writing off DMZ as a tacked on or unpolished mode, it feels like over time, the sentiment toward the modes has actually only improved, with more and more content creators who cover the mode actually doing pretty well for themselves, partly because the storytelling aspect of an extraction shooter just gives you so much flexibility with content. Every game itself can be retold in interesting ways as the people and things that you encounter are different almost every time, which is a true strength of the genre as a whole. DMZ though, along with its lack of depth, also lacks that true penalty that most hardcore extraction shooters have, as for the most part the loot you lose in DMZ isn't really all that important to the player. You do have the guns that you can take in, but you unlock these insured slots, and depending on how many you've unlocked, you can just go into each game with basically your loadout weapons, and then if you die, they just go on cooldown. And the rest of the guns that you take in are the contraband weapons, which are guns that you will completely lose if you die, but those don't really matter as much because you can just use the insured weapons whenever they're off cooldown. DMZ really does feel like it got close to hitting the magic of what makes a game like Tarkov great, and made it way more accessible with Call of Duty gameplay instead of, you know, the little bit of jank or hard to get into style of Tarkov. But unfortunately, it didn't get all the way there due to that lack of depth that we talked about that is really the strong point of a game in the genre like Tarkov or even the Cycle or Marauders. And now we enter the upcoming section of extraction shooters, where we talk about the plethora of extraction shooters that have been revealed in some way, shape, or form, some of which will have massive push behind them. Starting off, let's talk about the two-time champ himself, Dr. Disrespect. A few years back, he created his own game studio called Midnight Society, and their first work is none other than an extraction shooter. Chock full of AAA and gaming industry veterans, Midnight Society has been plugging away on their extraction shooter, Dead Drop. Now, they are taking multiple interesting routes here. One is that they've actually been putting out very early development builds that supporters can play and offer feedback on called snapshots. This is actually pretty cool, as you can see the development cycle almost from the beginning, and they're able to gather feedback the whole way through and not just at the end when it's usually too late to change core design choices. The other interesting route is NFTs, and oh boy, do we love NFTs here on the channel. Heck, you know what? I think it might be time to sell you the coveted RS NFT right now. If you buy it right now, you can get your own JPEG of my finger worth an astonishing $1 million. Totally real, totally legit. Just go ahead and PayPal me that and you know, I'll send you over the JPEG. Now jokes aside, the end product of how these NFTs are going to work in the game is pretty unknown, but currently the way they work is there was a set amount of founders that were able to sign up for the game and kind of support it early on, which which got them access to the snapshots, some random perks, and most importantly, the NFT, which presents itself in-game as a unique face mask that your character can wear. According to OpenSea, the postings start at about 
3 Ethereum, which I believe would be around $500 USD. I really know nothing about NFTs, but I think the logic here is that these will go up in value once the game finally comes out and they're more wanted, you know, similar to some of those really rare CSGO skins that go for obscene amounts of money. While it's too late to become a founder now, the lucky 10,000 that were chosen only had to pay $50, and they're probably hoping that their value on those NFTs continues to rise. We have yet to see if these will be implemented through gameplay in any way, or if they're just purely going to be cosmetic. There was a Dr. Disrespect tweet about winning a tournament in front of a ton of fans and winning an NFT, so I don't know if he was just, you know, hyping up the game or trying to get some buzz, or if they actually plan on implementing NFTs into tournament modes, or if he literally just meant instead of our prize pool, you get an NFT. I really have no clue. That said, the actual game itself these days is pretty basic due to how early it is along. I actually got some time to play in the last snapshot, which at the time of writing and recording this video was Snapshot 5, and honestly, I had a pretty good time, but eventually eventually just got a little bored due to lack of content. As of today, the game is just PvP only, and it's all about progressing your character through loot found in each game, either by extracting at certain spots with all your loot, or by eliminating the lobby and being the last one standing. I had a ton of fun using proximity chat and working with or betraying other players, but there is still a lot of polish that needs to be done on the game. Dead Drop does actually have an interesting mechanic too, where once you die, you're not totally out of the lobby, and you actually get a set amount of times that you can respawn back into it where you can try and get some of your loot back or go and get revenge on the person that killed you. Though you are at a disadvantage since when you respawn it's with a pistol only instead of with the loadout that you brought in. My early impressions of the gameplay itself have been good and I am excited to see it progress with some skepticism about the NFTs. However, if they just stay cosmetics, that won't bother me too much. While it feels like Midnight Society has kind of just kept to themselves and developed this for the hard hardcore fans, I think as we get closer to an actual launch, we're going to see some big time marketing around the game. I expect it and another game that we're going to talk about here in a little bit to be kind of the big extraction shooters that are going to duke it out in the near future. Dark and Darker is a very interesting take at the extraction shooter genre, because honestly, there isn't really any shooting other than the bow and arrow. Dark and Darker takes the extraction genre to the medieval dungeon crawling fantasy, and it completely blew up for what the game is, made by an extremely small team of developers in South Korea. The game actually hit an all-time peak player base of 275,000 concurrent players just during one of their playtests, not even a release of the game, which is absolutely insane because at that time, the game didn't even really have any marketing, and if you went and looked, didn't even really have a proper trailer. This game just hit it right for the players, and tons of streamers and content creators hopped on and were having an absolute blast. Now that said, there is a chance this game never comes out. While I won't go into the full story because it's ever evolving and honestly, it's a lot to talk about, basically long story short, Nexon is suing Iron Mace for stealing the game. As of right now, that case is still ongoing and the game is basically in limbo with even the Steam page nuked off of Steam. Hopefully it comes back though, because even though I was utter dog shit at this one, it was by far one of the most unique takes on the emerging genre, and it fit that exact right niche that I think a lot of survival games hit back in the day. Pure hectic fun mixed with some of the jank that people just seem to love. Next up we have the big daddy, the monolith, my childhood dreams, something, something, oh hey, Bungie actually announced a new game. Yes, you heard me right, Bungie announced a new game that isn't Destiny, and it's actually the return of Halo, the extraction shooter. They actually bought the rights from Microsoft with their bags of money from Sony, and basically Bungo is finally back to make the Master Chief popular again. Oh wait, fuck, that isn't the game they're putting out? <sighs> I guess it's actually the 90s sci-fi shooter marathon, but this time coming back as an extraction shooter. And that's basically all we know other than seeing the art style in a cinematic trailer, which actually upset some old time fans as it definitely deviates from the prior art style of the game. We aren't really sure when this one is going to come out, but based on Bungie's track record alone, we can expect it to probably be massive. Will it be good out of the gate? Well, that's up for debate, but it's hard to argue against Bungie's track record 
record, as they've basically gone back to back on completely revolutionizing and taking over a genre. First with Halo in the arena shooter, and second with Destiny in the looter shooter. Say what you want about those games, but both of them dominated the spaces that they were in, and Destiny to this day is still a top dog. Bungie for all their flaws, know how to make a good game that gets people excited, even if maybe it took them a little longer to get there with Destiny. Next up we have the Division Heartland. This game has been kicking around for a while and it's basically Ubisoft's take at an extraction shooter. Ubisoft loved to jump on trends so we'll see if this one ends up being any good. It could be, maybe it's kind of the revival of the Division survival that we talked about earlier. Maybe it's a totally new thing. We haven't seen much on this one from them. There's also other titles like Arc Raiders which is by Embark Studios which is that newer studio comprised of some of those former Battlefield devs that are also developing the Finals which is a game that is recently beginning a little bit of buzz. This actually has a playtest coming up on June 29th so by the time this video is out people will probably have played Arc Raiders and will know if it's any good. There's also Hyenas which is developed by Creative Assembly most known for Alien Isolation and the Total War franchise and developed by Sega. Now this one I can't get into too much because I did actually play it but it's in closed alpha and I'm not 100% sure how much I can say. Basically I thought it was pretty fun for what's there. I don't know if it'll be the next massive extraction shooter though. There's also a ton of indie studios similar to the Battle Royale wave that are also taking a stab. Some of these are going to be cool and unique, you know, like Dark and Darker. Some of them are probably going to be less so and they're just going to feel a little bit derivative of the other extraction shooters. But here's a couple that are on my radar. There's Ascendant and Dead Zone. Both of these I've seen on Twitter that looked pretty cool. Other than that, there's a ton more that I probably haven't seen or forgot about. But along with the AAA entries in the extraction shooter genre, there's going to be a lot of indies. There's also the rumored Halo to Tonka mode, which at one point people thought was a battle royale, but now people are kind of rumoring I got transitioned to an extraction shooter. I have no clue if any of that is true anymore. I thought I did, but honestly, who knows what's going on with the Halo franchise. So at the end of the day, will extraction shooters be the next huge gaming trend where every company and their mom put out an extraction shooter? Only time will tell. And I think a lot of it rides on the successes or failures of some of the upcoming heavy hitters. Today, games like H1Z1 or The Culling have been completely forgotten in the Battle Royale space, replaced by the monoliths of Fortnite, Warzone, and Apex Legends. Will early games like Hunt and Tarkov face a similar fate as more polished and streamlined experiences come in? Or will the new games fail to totally understand the genre that they're trying to build off of like DMZ and never reach their full potential? That is what we're going to find out in the next three to five years of gaming. And honestly, I'm pretty excited for it, at least at the moment. I might get sick of it at some point. Today, newly announced extraction shooters are already experiencing the fatigue usually only an overly saturated genre would receive, when in reality, as I showed, the genre is basically still in its infancy. Now, not all genres are destined to take over the gaming space, and maybe that's the fate for the extraction shooter. But for now, you know what an extraction shooter is, and as gamers, we just get to strap in and see where the genre goes. Thanks for watching the video, I appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to all the supporters on Patreon. You guys are the real legends kind of keeping these videos going, but any support is appreciated, whether it's through Patreon or it's just watching the video and sharing it with your friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what kind of topics you want to see tackled, and I'll see you all next time.